as a person that yeah. anyone's dating or doing anything you would think you know that love will conquer all that love shouldn't see anything but love well you gotta you know? love yourself first yeah, yeah. you know and i think maybe that's something i didn't do for a long time and, and um i think nowadays I, I prefer being by myself than than to be in a relationship just because you're supposed to be in a relationship. Absolutely, everybody you know, does. I'd yeah. just rather be by myself than be in a bad relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, in the creative world, I know there's oh, the creative, where I'm creative, it's very hard to find people of equal stature, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's physically, mentally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And so, in the creative world, as you travel and you do more things, do you find that being a member of the LGBTQ community, I would think, and this is just me and maybe people can say whatever, I would think it would broaden your, um, broaden your options and broaden your opportunity because you have another community to appeal to, not just the... I would hope that would be the case. I, I, have, I hold out hope that somehow that that community will will support me more at, at my live performances and by my recordings and things but um, and I hate to stereotype or, or put anybody in a box but the, uh, most of the LGBT community that I've rubbed elbows with so far um, don't seem to be all that open to jazz music or is, it ja is it jazz is it jazz music or live music is it just the nature of the community itself or is it just not a creative type of community no, there's there's, there's a lot creative of creative people, yeah. In the music field that, that I know are LGBT. Yes, I mean, yes. The, 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 I, mean, I always bring this analogy up, but the lesbian folk community is full of great songwriters and performers. And, and Eric Gold, I think his name is Eric Gold. He's a huge, I mean, he's fantastic. Yeah, I don't say that there aren't talented people. My goodness, there's plenty of them. I just don't know that there's a, an LGBTQ um, mass audience for jazz music or mm -hmm. that are willing. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this. That are willing to to really um, want to to understand forms of art in music at least that require a little bit of education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there I said it. Um, it takes a little bit. <laughs> well, don't of, hold it against. Really, it, <laughs> it takes a little bit of a um, study to be able to appreciate the higher forms mm -hmm. of art. And mm -hmm. as as our society stands right now, there aren't a lot of people that want to pay to listen to or to go con here in a concert, a higher form of music or art. They want to go out where it's more of a social experience and they interact with people in the crowd as opposed to great art on the stage. And people are viewing you and they're having a, this aura of so, perception. So my hope is that there's, there's, a, there's a knot of people out there that are going to be rabid fans that, that do have some sort of um, you know, ear, trained ear to hear what, what the, the higher forms of music can do, the emotion that they can pull forward, the, you know, the, uh, just the, the just general feeling that, that um, a more informed type of music can have, rather than just a beat. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. It's more than that. Well, let's go back to what, a little bit of what you said about jazz. Mm -hmm. Do you think with the times, technology, how has it changed the views that the world have uh, uh, for jazz musicians like yourself? Well, jazz has been a, an ambassador of America for the longest time. Some of the most effective ambassadors and people that helped bring down the walls of the Cold War have been American jazz musicians. Louis Armstrong was a really a force for that, and Dave Brubeck, and, and All those. they toured the world, and, and they were like the, on the first line of communication with other cultures that might not give America a, a look, you know, and they broke, they won people over. So, so jazz is, is more appreciated in other countries it than it is here in the United States. Now what's happening, and, and I'm, a, I'm a part of this as well, is in the indie music movement, and right. people that are independent artists are not necessarily listening to um, um, marketers tell them what kind of music to make. Right. And I'm, I put out a brand of music like the, it, that has a lot of variety, maybe too much, but um, I, I do all kinds of different influences in world music and it influences my music and, and uh, the folk the stuff creeps into my music. So where it's, it becomes like a, a, a hybrid, really. It becomes mm -hmm. like a, a, they call it crossover jazz sometimes. Um, um, just like there's a, the whole new grass movement in, in the bluegrass yes. scene where, where mm -hmm. they blend in more classical and jazz elements into bluegrass. And that, that's happening in jazz as well. 
um, where the music is all just a melting pot. And I think that's that's great. That's, that's cool. That's, to me, that's the way it should be. That, that all the creativity, you should be able to bring in all sorts of influences to the music. And how has hip hop influenced your kind of jazz music? Because you play a bass. I mean, there's no way you're going to get. Well, maybe in the multi rhythms that are in hip hop, probably if, if anything, if you hear it more in the solo playing, in the in the. In, I love the subdivide rhythm. That's just my drummer, Randy mm -hmm. Drake, plays in my band, and, and we we can really divvy up the beat into small fractions. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I hear in hip hop that might be informing what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm a hip hop artist per se. No, I know. I probably but, never will be. Yeah. <laughs> but just that that. Brrr, yeah, the influence. These incredible polyrhythms mm -hmm. that come out in hip hop. Or, mm -hmm. I I definitely listen to those and study them. Have you been able to incorporate any of those kinds of sounds in your repertoire? Well, like I say, in my solos, you definitely hear that. And so, speaking of your solos, where will you be doing your next performance, Jennifer? Uh, well, in Los Angeles, I, I'm going on the road. I, I, I'm, um, I'm going to make these recordings as my very next um, mm -hmm. project. That and I this have. is the Indiegogo project that yes. you're talking about? What is the name of that project? It's called the Triple Play Project. Triple Play. <clears throat> it's Jennifer Lightham, the Triple Play Project. And okay. It, you can find it on my website. There's a link on the homepage. And what is the name of that website? And that's my name www.jenniferlightum.com, which is difficult to spell. That's right. It's if, the, if you're seeing this with any kind of text under the screen, it will be spelled correctly. But <laughs> it's L. -E well, we'll make sure they get it right. L e i t h a m. Yeah, and so that's my next project. So I'm not actually performing it out in public in LA for a while. So I'm going overseas. I'm going to be going to um, France and to Holland. And Where? Any particular places over there? I'm playing the Breda Festival in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, last week in May. It's called the Breda? Yeah, B-R-E-D-A. Okay. And I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah. And then after that, I'm going to be doing dates around the city of Paris for oh, next wow. week. Oh, wow. So you're going to have fun. Yeah. I'm going back over to Europe to play in Hungary, too. But, but the next big thing in L.A. is the concert with Vox Femina. Oh wow, where is that going to be? Wonderful all women choir. Oh, oh my wow. God, are they great? When? Um, it's June twenty first at Zipper Hall, the okay. Colburn School of Music. Oh wow, yes. Across from Disney Hall yes. in downtown LA. Yes. And they're doing a night of jazz, and I'm the featured artist. And okay, my so everybody. Gonna be there. We're going to do a few of my tunes with the chorus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing all that. Now, do you have any LinkedIn, Twitter accounts, anything Certainly. that people can contact you, social media? Yes. If I'm you in do, all of those. let's roll with it. And your name is still Jennifer Lightham Jennifer on all of those. Lightham. You can find me by using my name. If, okay. you do a, if you do a Google on my name, all those things line up yeah, right, yeah. right away. You'll yeah. see all kind of things about me. And <laughs> what can we expect from the beautiful, adorable, you're just adorable, <laughs> Jennifer Lightham in the future for. Music? Do you plan on writing a book? Uh, Do you I've written a book, you know. actually. I haven't published it or okay. tried to publish it. Every person that goes through what I've been through, um, in your, in your, when you're going to the gatekeepers and when you want to go to have, to have the surgery or whatever, you have to be psychologically approved. So mm -hmm. as part of that process, you write a biography. Yes, so I'm sure. Every one of us has a biography, and there's so many of them out there. We call it yada. <laughs> Yet another transgender. Oh, I love that. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> so I've been reluctant to want to put it out just because there's tons of them out there and some of them are done so well. Janet Mock just did a really nice book and Jenny Boylan has a great book. There are just so many of them. But see, but, the thing is that what makes you stand out though is that you are famous. <laughs> and fortunately, people <laughs> want to know about famous people and you're not there's not that many of uh, you mm -hmm. know Jennifer Lightums in well, our I, industry I don't rule it out at some point maybe I'll try to get it published I, I, I would have to flesh out the last few years I, I haven't really been able to write about breakups and stuff you know it's I, uh, that's where the juicy stuff is yeah I need <laughs> to sit and talk to somebody about that yeah. but, but um, what's coming up is my, my triple play project I'm okay. very excited about it the next record's gonna have I have four new original tunes so far that are going to go on that record and mm -hmm. a bunch of arrangements that we've been doing and I'm singing a lot more than I'm, I'm used to and, and incorporating that more into the arrangements. So you got over that fear that you're, you know, remember you were saying you were going through something about you were afraid to sing for a while yeah, and you well, stopped singing. I didn't singing. sing for 30 years. Yeah. I stopped singing because I was, I was embarrassed about my voice and now right. it's, a, it's an asset. Now I love it. <laughs> I love it. And I've, yes. I've, since I made The Real Me in 2006, I've sung on all <laughs> my records and my DVD too. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I'm singing is something if you come to hear me play in a concert you'll hear me do a lot um, 
and I'm working at that really hard to get better and better and more comfortable. I'm scat singing now. I'm doing a lot more things. Oh, wow. Um, so there'll be more vocals on this next record. And then the, the record after that, which is the second of the triple play, is mm -hmm. um, going to be a Christmas record, a holiday-themed oh. record, of, like a winter solstice sort of record. Oh, that's going to uh, be I've interesting. Been writing, um, I've got one original so far for that, but I've got tons of arrangements I've done over the years. and I just got a, a great... Um, Bob Duro is a wonderful composer and very famous jazz musician who wrote and plays, recorded with Miles Davis and Miles did his things. Yeah. Anyway, he wrote the, my favorite Christmas song, which is so dark and snarky, ah, called Blue Christmas. Oh, Blue that, Christmas. Yeah, he recorded that with Miles Davis. And um, I just love that tune. And I don't think that tune has ever gotten the exposure it needs. So I'm going to record that again. Well, let's hear and, it. I would love Bob to see And Bob sent me his original arrangement on it. And yeah. I, you know, I, I, so I could find out exactly what the harmony was. And he's, he's a, good, a good friend. And so I'm going to record that. A bunch of other things on that record. And, yeah. and then the third project in the triple play is a solo bass record. Because oh, those, wow. those, for some reason, the solo bass things, I do these things that are like little concertos and sonatas on the bass. And, in the jazz realm, improvisation, but I've gotten such response from those uh, as downloads. Uh, my, my most downloaded stuff on iTunes are a couple of the solo things that I've recorded. So I'm going to. So make we can go on iTunes and YouTube and yeah. see these things. Yeah, they're on my CDs that have okay. already been out there. Okay, and, great. Uh, um, uh, there's like their CD called The Real Me and the CD called Left Coast Story. Uh -huh. And then The Real Me Live, my DVD. There's an audio download from that one. Okay. That's got um. Some, some, just, just bass alone. So my, my, my thing is I'm gonna put out a whole CD of just solo bass. And you're self-published. You don't have a label behind you at this Sinistro time. Sinistro Records. That's mm -hmm. my, that's so my own record label. company. Great. And that way I control everything. And you have your own publishing and all that stuff yes. too. Yes. Sinistro that's Music. Wonderful. That yeah. is Sinestro. Sinestro. Sinestro.